Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve and graph two-step inequalities. Now, basically, when solving two-step inequalities, it's just going to be just like, graph, just like solving two-step equations. The only difference is now we have an inequality that is not just going to represent one solution, like you know, at the end, x equals 10. Um, now we're going to have like x is greater than 10, or x is less than or equal to 10. So that, that is going to show multiple different solutions. So that's why we're going to graph it. But it also produces something that we could have you know, x is greater than 10 and x is less than 10 is totally two different answers, right? So it becomes important is which way the sign is going to be pointing. And whenever you're solving, you're never really going to change the direction of the sign. It's always going to remain the same. As you keep on writing it, you just keep on writing the sign exactly is. So you've got to be careful, though, not to like accidentally flip it. However, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, when you're using your inverse operations to solve, you are going to flip the sign. So that's just a very important thing to remember is don't ever change. You know, The direction of the sign is very important. That can change the answer. So you keep it always the same unless you multiply or divide by a negative number. And I highlight that because that's what we're going to do in the first problem. All right. So the main important thing here is when we're, you know, we want to, two-step equations, we're, we're, we're identifying the two operations that are happening to our variable. So you can see that my variable is being multiplied by negative 3. And you can see that it's also being added by 15. Why is it being added by 15? Because that's a positive 15. So you could, put, you could think of that like a plus sign there. Um, we usually don't write that in there. But that's a positive 15. That means it's being added. So because if you were to rewrite this, you would rewrite this as negative 3x plus 15 is greater than 3. So you can see that 15 is being added to the x. So what we're going to do is we need to use our inverse operations here. So the first thing we're going to do is undo addition and subtraction. So I'm going to subtract the 15 on both sides. When I'm doing that, I get negative 3x is now greater than negative 12. Then I need to undo multiplying by negative uh, 3. So I'm going to divide by negative 3 on both sides. Hence, again, remember, I'm dividing by a negative 3 on both sides. So my inverse operation I'm applying is negative. So therefore, now I need to flip the sign. So that divides to 1. And I'm left with x is now greater than 4. So to go ahead and graph this, I create a number line. Here's 4, 5. 6, 7, 3, 2, 1. OK, and I'm not going to get through this as, as common as we've done before, because I have other videos you know, on how to graph and so forth. So basically what we do is we start here. We make a nice big circle. I see that this is a greater than symbol, not greater than or equal to. So it's going to remain open. And remember, you can, always use your, um, you can always use your test points to verify this. My variable is on the left-hand side. so. Um, my arrow is pointing to the right, so that's going to tell me the solution is to the right. And let's just verify that. This is saying x is greater than 4. Well, is 5, 6, and 7 greater than 4? Yes. Is 2, 3, and 1 greater than 4? No. So these points are false. These points are true. Therefore, I'm going to shade to the right. And just remember, though, as I keep on going my number line to the right, you know, I get 8, 9, 10, 11. Those are numbers that are all greater than 4 as well. So I'm going to show an arrow representing that I can continue going to the right. All right, so now let's get to the next point, or uh, the next one. Again, here's another example here of um, my variable uh, being, or my, um, my number in front. So again, I'm going to subtract 11 here on both sides. Therefore, I'm left with 8x is greater than or equal to, uh, let's see here, that's going to be a negative 4. Now, I'm going to divide by an 8. And I'm left with a, oops, let's divide by 8 here. And now I'm left with an x is greater than or equal to um, a negative 1 half. Now, this gets a lot of students because they say, oh, well, you divided by, you know, there's a negative number there. Yes, but what I'm dividing by is not negative. It's only when you multiply or divide by a negative number. That can be negative, that can be, or that can't be negative. That can be negative, that's fine, because I have to divide by a positive 8. It's only when you multiply or divide by a negative number to solve are you going to flip the sign? So now we have 1 half, which is going to cause another little issue when our graphing. Because when we graph, we typically just use integers to represent here. So I'm going to want to use integers that are to the left and to the right of uh, negative 1 half. So let's start at negative 1. Then I'll go to 0, 1, 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. All right, so what you can see is negative 1 half, 
that is between negative 1 and 0. So rather than having my circle, rather than have my circle on, negative, on, an, on, a, on an integer, it's going to be in between them. Now also notice that this is greater than or equal to. So this is going to be a closed point. You can also use a test point to show that. But since it's closed, I'm going to provide in there. Then again, this one is just like the last one. It's greater than or equal to. So I'm going to look at my values. Well, obviously, positive values are greater than a negative number. So I'm going to show it to the right. And I'm going to continue getting positive. So I've got to make sure I include that arrow. All right, let's get to the next one. Here I have a fraction. Yes, love it. Um, a fraction, 3 halves x plus 4 is less than or equal to 13. So before you get to the fraction, though, we remember inverse operations, we always use the reverse order of operations, meaning we always undo addition and subtraction first. I see a lot of students here, and they'll just see the fraction. They say, I don't know how to do it. Well, we know that we undo addition and subtraction first anyway, so we can at least apply that operation. First thing you need to undo is the adding of the 4 on both sides. So by subtracting 4, I now have a 3 halves x is less than or equal to 9. OK, so now how do you undo multiplying by a fraction? Well, the main important thing that we're trying to do when we have a fraction being multiplied by numbers, we divide it. Why do we divide it? Because 8 divided by 8 gives us 1. 1 times x is x. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this coefficient to be 1. Yes, you could divide by a fraction. But a lot of students forget how to divide fractions. So the best thing that I always like to remember is a number multiplied by a reciprocal is always equal to 1. For instance. Um, 1 half times 2 over 1 is equal to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. A number, a fraction, multiplied by its reciprocal is always equal to 1. So remember, the reciprocal is you just swap the numerator and the denominator. So what's the reciprocal of 3 halves? Well, that is 2 thirds. So just multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. Therefore, that's going to go to 1. So that's going to leave me with x is less than or equal to. Now, some students you could say, well, I don't know how to divide fractions, nor do I know how to divide a whole number times a fraction. I think it's a little bit easier uh, dividing whole numbers by fractions, because to divide a whole number by a fraction, you just rewrite the whole number as a fraction. And then multiplying fractions, you just multiply across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So what I obtain is, kind of ran out of space here. What I obtain is x is less than or equal to 9 times 2 is 18 over 3. Well, um, 3 divides into 18 six times. OK, so now let's go ahead and graph that. So I'm going to create a number line here, best I can. 6, 7, 8, 9, 5, 4, 3. Okay. Now we choose a point at 6, or we choose a circle. We see that it's less than or equal to, so it's going to be closed, right? Anytime it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, it's going to be closed. Then we say x is less than or equal to 6. So you could choose test points, or you could just see, hey, the variable's on the left-hand side, and the arrow's pointing to the left, so I know it's going to go to the left. And let's check our answer. Is 3 less than 6? Yes, that's true. Is 9 less than 6? No, that's false. You always are graphing to where it makes your inequality true. All right, last example here. Uh, this one has a lot of negative signs. So a lot of students will automatically think, oh, you've got to flip the sign. But remember, that's only when you multiply or divide a negative number. And don't just think about flipping the sign until you actually get to it. So the first thing I see here is I have 4x minus 8. Well, you can see that my variable is being subtracted by 8. So I'm going to add an 8 on both sides. Adding 8 on both sides, I'm left with now 4x is greater than positive 4. Now, you can see my variable is being multiplied by 4, so I'm going to divide by 4. And therefore, finally, I'm left with x is greater than 1. So now, again, last thing I need to do, are you serious? I forgot to flip my sign. Oh, I even said it, and I didn't do it. <laughs> I'll probably get some comments for this one. x is less than 4. Wow. That's what you get when you make videos. OK, so that remains all the same. But now my values that are less than 4, because you've got to flip the sign, 
are going to the left. OK, so this one, when I graph it, I start here at 1, and then I go to 2, 3, 4, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Again, we make a circle. This is greater than, so it's just going to be like less 1. It's going to be an open circle. And then x is greater than 1. What numbers are greater than 1? 2, 3, or 4, or 0, negative 1, negative 2? That's obviously going to be the points to the right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you uh, solve and graph two-step linear inequalities. Thanks.